everybody how are we doing tonight it is wednesday october 27th can you believe that october is almost over and 2021 is almost over Whew, deep breaths we got this we're gonna get through the end of the year together and we have so many ways to keep you on track motivated healthy through the holidays i'm really excited to share those with you in a moment um but tonight we are talking about a topic that I had no idea would be such a hit in the community. It is so funny. I, you know, sometimes I post something and I'm like, oh, they're going to be really into this. And y'all aren't. And then sometimes I post something. I'm like, oh, like two people are going to care. And it blows up. And feet are one of those things. <laughs> All right, let me pin this as an announcement. Let me know if you're watching so I can say hello to you. Um, hi, Dale. Hi, Alexis. So yeah, feet, we all we all have them and we all really care about them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had no idea that foot health would be such a popular topic. We had so many questions come in. We have, we've posted about should you train barefoot or with feet, with shoes, <laughs> with feet. Um, and we've just gotten hundreds of comments on those threads. It's so fun. So uh, we're doing a whole tonal talk with Dr. Liz all about foot health tonight. We're going to answer your questions. I have them written down here. If you pre-submitted them, thank you. Um, and we're going to get to that. But So I'm going to go quickly through all of my updates and announcements so that we have plenty of time with Dr. Liz. Hi, Angie. Hi, Scott. Hi, Dan. Aloha. Rubbing it in that he's in Hawaii. I love it. Um, okay. So first of all, live classes. Oh, my gosh. Are you loving them? Are you doing them? Tell me everything. I've done four now. I'm obsessed. I have so much fun. Every time I get a shout out, I completely fangirl. It's the best. Um, they've been great, but I want to hear how you're liking them. And I also wanted to check in with everyone and see if you had questions around what's live versus encore versus on demand. I know it's a lot. I know it's a little confusing. So I am here to help you. Quick overview. Um, live is, you know, you're with that coach in the LA studio. They can give you a shout out. You can give high fives or cheer your friends on in the workout. You can see others get PRs. It's a very cool experience. Um, encore workout, that same workout plays again at a specific time on your trainer. So everyone can show up to that and you can cheer on people in your workout with you, but the shout outs are going to be from the previous group. So it's a little bit of a hybrid. And then 48 hours after the workout is live, it goes into the on-demand library where you can find it in your app and on the trainer by sorting by live classes. If you scroll to the bottom of the filter, you'll see a little live button and you can just do that on your own whenever you want um, at your own convenience. So I hope that kind of helps, but if you have more questions, just post in the group or let me know, um, but definitely try a live class if you haven't, they're awesome. Um, oh, good. I'm seeing uh, Tara said the live class was so much fun, so much energy. Kristen, I'm totally obsessed with the live classes. Me too, Kristen. So good. Um, okay. Um, we also had some a ton of new content drop this week. Coach Allison has a new advanced program focused on the core, which is fabulous. I'm doing it now. Workouts about 30 minutes long. If you are intermediate and you're considering an advanced program, I would say check this one out. It's very doable, but also challenging on the course. So it's really fun. Um, and then we've also have new strength, new quick fits, new bar, new recovery, cardio, warmups, and mobility. I'm not going to go through all of those because then we won't have time to talk about feet, but definitely check those out on your trainer or in the mobile app. And I've linked to that post above if you missed it. So you can see all the new content this week. Moving on, um, we have an Ask Coach Jackson tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Our amazing tonal coaches love you and they love to answer your questions. So if you have questions about training on tonal, um, about how their programs are designed or anything like that, just post it in the Ask a Coach event invite and they will go live and answer them. Um, it's a great way to connect with your coaches and to just say hi and get to know them. Super fun. So those are every Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, reminder to submit your completed October bingo boards in the link above. I am one square away. I've got one more live workout to do or encore workout. You can also do the on-demand live workouts if you know the encore and live times aren't working for your schedule. I want you all to fill in the board. I'm not trying to make it hard or difficult for you. So 
do what you got to do to make it happen. Submit your bingo boards completed, every square done for a chance to win $100 to the Tonal Gear Shop. We've got lots of new gear and more on the way. So fun stuff. Um, definitely get those bingo boards in. We're going to randomly select 10 winners on the first and we'll get those emails out to you with the codes of the win for, for who wins. So get those in. Moving along, um, our November challenge is a fabulous one. If you are new-ish to Tonal, um, maybe in the last six months, um, or you're just looking for a little extra accountability, you want to progress in your training on Tonal, really work on the basics before you move forward, um, it's called New Member November Challenge with Coach Jared and Coach Allison. The first time we're doing a community challenge with two amazing coaches. So the first two weeks, you're going to go through Coach Jared's Beginner Breakthrough. And the second two weeks, you're going to go through Stronger for Sport with Coach Allison. So you're going to learn the fundamentals, you're going to master them in the beginning, and then you're going to build on that and learn about dynamic weight modes and really increase your explosive strength and your athletic ability in Stronger for Sport with Coach Allison. So jump in that challenge group. I've linked it above. Um, you're going to get Facebook Live Q&As with them, with those coaches. You're going to get group support. It's going to be a ton of fun, so don't miss out. Um... Let's see. Um, we've got book club. We've got our effortless discussion with the author, Greg McGowan. I think I'm saying his name wrong, so I should probably figure that out before tomorrow because he's joining us. Um, it's at 5 p.m. Pacific time in a Zoom link, so you can go to that event invite above. If you haven't read the book, you can still join. You can be a fly on the wall. It's going to be a really great discussion. We are honored to have the author join us, um, so check that out. And then if you want to join book club for the next month, it is No Sweat by Dr. Dr. Michelle Seeger. And this is all about a new way of looking at fitness to actually keep you motivated for a lifetime. So instead of hopping on and off the bandwagon, starting something that you can't you know, see through after a couple of weeks. It's a whole new approach to fitness that is fun and sustainable. Um, and she is a lead leading researcher in uh, motivation, and she is going to be joining us for Tonal Talk next week and for the book club discussion. So this could be life changing if you're someone who has always wanted to be a fitness person but has never been able to get there. This book is going to be for you. I only have, oh, that was it. We did it all. Okay, great. Um, I also have just a couple of shout outs really quick. I wanted to shout out Patrick Carreri. He did all four live classes on the day that they launched. And that's just incredible. And I really want to give him a round of applause. So Patrick, if you are watching, um, we love you and we are so proud of you. If someone could please tag him so that he sees this if he's not watching. Um, just big kudos to Patrick. I love how he says he doesn't recommend overtraining, but it was a very special day and he wanted to support all the coaches. We feel that love and we send it right back to you, Patrick. And let's see, I've got a couple more. I want to show a little bit of love and support for Rebecca. Um, she had a tough, a Rebecca Sheldon Brogan. She had her truck broken into and stolen, which really is not cool. And we send you lots of love, Rebecca. But despite that, she found the positive in her day. She had, she says she had the best day, best week, best month on Tonal. She broke through her lower body strength score of a thousand um, and she was happy to have Tonal to channel that frustration. So we are so proud of you, Rebecca. She even made this really cool little graphic, um, but that's some incredible work and we love that you were able to find the strength and find the positive in your day and we love that we could be a part of it. All righty. So if someone can please um, tag Rebecca so that she sees that love, that would be awesome. All right. On to the main event. Let's talk feet. Um, so we've got Dr. Liz back with us again, helping us feel strong and lift safely. And tonight she's back to talk about foot health, of course. She's got a rich knowledge in sports medicine and a PhD in kinesiology and rehabilitation science. No big deal. Dr. Liz will break down how to move pain-free and injury-proof our bodies. And we love having her on for these really important discussions and practical talks. So get your feet out, get your feet ready, get a pen, get your notebook, and please help me welcome Dr. Liz. 
Get your feet out. It's time. Water out. <laughs> Hi, Kate. Hi, Liz. Thanks Hi, everyone in the community. That was a really long intro. I had a lot to go through. So thank you for sitting there patiently. Oh, I was taking a nap. It's fine. <laughs> Good. Well, napping is important. I learned that in our last book club, um, last month's book club. But um, on to the main event. Hot, hot topic in the community. I didn't know this would get the people going so much, but it has. So let's dive right in. Um, you know, we've got 50 minutes and I think we're going to use every single minute of this discussion because we've already had so many questions come in. But let's go through a quick anatomy of the foot as we always do in these tonal talks. Um, I'm going to pull up your slide and then I'm going to hide myself so that you can walk us through it. All right. So today we're going to talk about the anatomy quickly, the function of the foot quickly. And then I'm so excited to walk you through some mobility and self-assessment drills. The feet are the foundation of the body. They are what allows us to have rigidity as we push off really hard in our sprints. And they're able to be also immediately then supple so that they can absorb shock. So where we run into problems is when we have an imbalance in either the suppleness or the rigidity, it's either too rigid or too supple or our, our proprioception or the body's awareness of itself is off. So today we're going to fix all of those things or at least bring you some awareness. So here in the foot, um, there's a lot of bones here. And what I'm going to be talking about, some of the language I'm going to be using, you've got the forefoot, the midfoot, and the hindfoot. The forefoot is more the phalanges or your little baby little piggies. The midfoot is surrounded by those red lines. Um, sometimes you get midfoot sprains here. There's a lot that can happen here. There's a lot of ligaments in the foot that connect these midfoot bones as well. And then the hindfoot is what we think of as like the ankle and the heel bone. And so... Um, moving on to the next slide, once we're, once we understand what's going on in the feet, we're dealing with a lot of common conditions. All right. So some things that will often, uh, be, uh, the things that I hear complained about most plantar fasciitis, either flat feet or high arches, which we call pes planus or pes cavus, pes meaning foot and plain like flat and cave like a cave. Uh, bunions, or we call hallux valic, valgus. Your hallux is actually your big toe. So you can in incorporate that into your dinner conversation tonight. Um, and then a stiff big toe. So the big toe is so important. And if you look at the, uh, if you look at the picture above me, this is a, a classic bunion, an inflamed bunion. And we joke about it. Our grandma's got a bunion, but it's no laughing matter, folks. What has happened is the shoes you're wearing are too small or the the flexibility in your big toe is is too limited and so what happens is over time that phalange that hallux that that distal phalange starts to migrate over and lean over until it's no longer functional and so people will get surgery to fix this um, i know a bunch of members in our community um, have, have, uh, have had bunion surgery, surgeries or bunionectomies. I just looked at, I just looked at the, get your feet out. What is this? A Quentin Tarantino movie comment? Y'all are hilarious. Um, and so we take a look at normal range of motion. Okay. Here, normal range of motion. We should have a pretty good range of motion in, in our big toe. 90 degrees is what I like to have 80 to 90 degrees is what I like to see in my athletes. If you have less than that, if you're at about 45 degrees, it's what we call hallux limitus. And if you have even less than that, if your big toe just ain't moving, it's hallux rigidus. And that's where we get into like, a oh, the big toe is actually really important for the suppleness of your foot in order to get into position. So Bulgarian split squats, anything where you're kneeling, yoga can start to be really painful. And so let's take a look at some of the things we can do to assess what your toes are doing, what your feet are doing, um, in order to in order to then work on it and move into better foot function. <clears throat> so, where's my friend Kate? So we're gonna do a little quick self assessment. So if we take a look at this picture here, um, right in the middle, so we've got a couple of angles that we're working with. I'm looking today. We're gonna assess the ankle angle, the dorsiflexion angle and the big toe flexion angle, extension really, angle. I'm also gonna teach you how to find what I call short foot. All right, you can put that graph away. 
and we're going to assess this big toe motion. So just as a, just as a fun fact, shoes, if you take a look at shoes, how many shoes nearby? Um, Yes, I do. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she's going to, I'm going to walk through, she's going to walk us through the assessment on my feet and I need no one to make fun of my foot size because Morgan always makes fun of my big feet and I'm sensitive about it. So please no one make fun of my flippers. <laughs> You're just real stable, Kate. I would be so, so jealous. <laughs> All right. So shoes are designed to allow a rocker effect. Okay, so usually they'll have this like elevated toe. It's a rocker effect. Um, it allows for a rocker in the ankle and the big toe. Because of that, oftentimes our own feet then say, well, I guess I can just be stiff because my shoes are giving me all the rocker every time that I walk. So a lack of ankle or uh, a lack of, of rock ability, a lack of mobility in the ankle or the ball of the foot, what's going to happen is if you, if this is my foot, okay, it's actually my shoe. Um, believe me, right, wait, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't have that rocker effect, where your foot's going to go, it's actually going to spin either to the outside or to the inside. And that's where we get the bunions. So you're, you're, you're trying to, you can't get the rocker to go up and you'll catch your big toe and start to trip and fall on your face. So your feet know that your body knows that. So what it's going to do is try and get out of the way. So that's when you see people doing like little duck walks or their knees cave in. It's usually not a problem with the knees. It's usually a problem with the toe. Um, Okay, so let's get into the self-assessment. So Kate, I'll need you to uh, sit facing the side in, in a chair. Is this big chair gonna be okay? It's like a big, or should I do the bench? Let's do the bench, let's do the bench. Okay. So what we're gonna be assessing is simultaneous ankle dorsiflexion or the ability of you to bring your toes to your nose as well as big toe extension. So the ability of you to actually bring your toes to your nose. All right, so tilt me down so I can see just your knees and your feet. Awesome. I need Morgan in here helping with the camera. Well, you need a camera operator, don't we? <laughs> All right, so, okay, so Kate, I'm gonna have you send your knees forward as much as possible. And we already know Kate has insane ankle range of motion, so. Scoop back. We established that last time. Yeah, we've established that in the angle talk, which if you haven't watched it, it is on Facebook and YouTube, I believe. Okay, so what we're looking for here, if you're doing this along with us, you're looking for, Kate, it's obscene how much ankle range of motion you have. <laughs> um, we're looking for at least 30 degrees. Kate has like full 45 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion. I'm so jealous. Um, I think I said that last time too. I was like, oh, what's it like? Tell me. <laughs> Um, okay, so now, Kate, you're going to reach around and bring your little big toe up. And what we're looking for is at least 30 degrees of big toe flexion. So send that knee forward, and you're going to measure this angle if you're doing this at home, trying to get at least 45 degrees. So from here, just peel it off the ground, or like with my finger? With your finger, yep. You're going to just pull it up. Oh, how much you got there, Kate? Can you see it? Should I bring my laptop? Not really. Okay. We're getting real close in person. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> I feel like I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. So, Kate, you oh, oh, finally, finally, yes. there's something wrong with you. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, full disclosure every time that we do these assessments, Kate has like insane, perfect range of motion. So, Kate, this is so exciting. There's something. <laughs> So, Kate, I would love to see that you have more big toe flexibility. Um, cool. Okay, so we can actually do something about this. Okay, beautiful. Also, are those tonal pants? I'm sorry. Yes, they are. They're the um, pocket pro pants or something. They're super cute. Comfy. They're cute. Are they blue? They're so cute. They're blue. Okay. Anyways, when you don't have when you don't have at least thirty degrees of big toe flexion in this motion. Wait, it's but I can like, do this really easily. Does that count for anything? It does. It does. Yeah. So that's actually, that's that. Let me see that again. Like this is no problem. Oh, we got 90. So we got a nice tight line. We got a nice tight, um, 
ankle, uh, fascial line from your calf into your big toe. So we're really putting everything on a stretch and then seeing. So this, in this position, this would be like, um, anytime that you're running or running up a, running up a hill, right? When everything's on a stretch, how much, how much slack do you actually have? Mm. Okay. So now I'm going to teach you short foot position. So can you get your left foot out of the way? All right. So here's short foot position. So you're going to put equal weight on the, on the tripod of your foot. So you have three points. You have the ball of your big toe, the ball of your pinky toe and your heel. Should I stand or sit? Uh, you can sit here just for the demonstration, but um, this is most uh, optimal when standing. Okay. So shift your weight so that you have equal pressure on all three points. Got it. And then press your toe prints into the ground with like five pounds of pressure. Done. Okay. And then can you imagine that you've got a little tiny baby egg underneath your arch that you're trying to protect. Yes, but don't lift that big toe mound off the floor. You want to kind of squeeze and you might get a little cramp on the inner arch of your foot. Yeah, there you go. Feel the difference? Yeah. Can everyone really see this? Just really. I know we're on carpet. So um, I'm I can but... move on to um, this, which is like a little bit harder. Yeah, let's try and just let's do a standing short foot right here. So here's a Here's a normal foot, which looks really nice. And let show me that short foot position. Yeah, keep that big toe mound on the floor. And you want to squeeze. Yeah, you want to smush. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Lift that arch. Cool. So this is short foot position, everybody. This is what your foot should look like every single time you are standing, every single time you're doing any sort of weight bearing movements. So uh, what we'll do instead, Kate, can you show me like a nice flat foot? What we'll do instead is, oh, your feet are, your feet look great. Try and roll, try and roll onto your medial arch and give me like an exaggerated. Yeah. So this is a flat foot. And when we're bearing load on a flat foot, we don't activate the intrinsic foot muscles in order to support the weight that we're, that we're lifting. And that's where we can get uh, we can get knee pain and hip pain, uh, plantar fasciitis, because we're just resting on the static structures of the feet instead of really owning the stance. All right, now we get into the fun stuff. So now we're going to do something about, about your foot mobility. The first thing that I want you to find is, do you have like a little mini towel or something that you can put underneath, like a roll that you can put underneath your foot? Um, so what are we going to start out with first? Yeah, perfect. Yes, perfect. So let's roll it up. Tight roll this time. I think this is too big. One second. So we've got, we, let's see some of the questions that we've got. Uh, a lot of, a lot of feet comments so far. This is quite the Tarantino. <laughs> this is the weirdest movie. tonal talk we've ever done. That's for sure. Okay, have this. <laughs> um, Caroline says, I find that the big toe on my left has very little mobility, which is the same side I had a very severe ankle sprain, which I'm still trying to fully recover from. I'm so excited to show you exactly likely why this is happening, Caroline. Get ready. We're going to touch on that in a moment. So let's put a pin in that. Okay, so roll it up. The first thing we're going to talk about is a proper calf stretch. So when we're able to stretch out, there are two big main muscles in your – in your, uh, in your, sh in your calf, <laughs> the gastrocnemius and the soleus. Yeah. So go ahead and, and let's get into a calf stretch position, Kate. Gonna have to walk me through that. <laughs> uh, go ahead and stand uh, uh, against the wall. Stand and then let me see your feet. Okay. Sansa's here. Hi, hey, Sansa. <laughs> All right. Turn to the side and place. We're going to be investigating your left foot. So place the towel underneath. If you were to split your foot into quarters, okay, one, two, three, four, you're going to place the, the towel long ways on the, the quarter that your big toe is in. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. So now go ahead and try and stretch that left calf out so you can step your right leg forward and stretch it out. Gorgeous. So what this is doing, this towel, is allowing 
a, f- a true stretch of the gastroconsoleus. What will happen sometimes is as we're stretching the calf, we'll start to mush that foot flat and we'll try and pronate and it'll cheat us out of a calf stretch. So if you try this in your next calf stretch by supporting the front part of your foot, we're really preventing any of the cheating, any of the pronation. This is that same thing I was talking about when you when your feet go really flat. So this is a nice way to stretch out the tissues that affect the foot. So you have have a lot of toe flexors and extensors. You have a lot of, um, uh, that's it, toe flexors and extensors and, and ankle flexors that live in the back of your calf and in the front of your shin. So we wanna give those love if we're talking about the foot. So the next thing we can do is a self release at the plantar fascia. So Kate, if you can have a seat on the bench so that you can touch your foot. Yeah, and then uh, let's come into a figure four position and with your right ankle on your left knee. <laughs> oh, yes. But my right butt cheek is so sore. Who, who's to blame for that one? Coach Brendan's live class. Oh, my gosh. A butt kicker for sure. <laughs> All right, so you're going to you're gonna take your thumb right into the, the arch of your foot. Yeah, and massage it. You know what to do. Yeah. So what you can do is you can dig in, hold a spot, hold a spot that feels like oof, and then extend your toes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's the sound we're looking for. Yeah, everyone do this right now. I'm doing it now. I'm doing it. it So this is a great way to give you a little mini self-release at the plantar fascia. Um, There's also some beautiful toe flexor muscles in this area that you can give some love to wake up, you know, 80 to 85% of the support in your balance comes from the big toe. So it's really important to have big toe control and big toe strength. That being said, oftentimes we will, we will skip past the support in our big toe that's derived from inside the foot. Let me show you what I mean. So with your foot like that, I'm going to give everyone a little anatomy lesson. So right where your thumb is, Kate, go ahead and put your thumb back there. Go ahead and, and draw a line from, with your thumb from the base of your big toe mound to your heel. Yeah. So right along here, there's a muscle there that helps flex the big toe. Now, Kate, touch right behind your ankle bone, that inside ankle bone. There's also a muscle that flexes the big toe that runs behind there. There's flexor hallucis longus, which is what Kate's pointing out now. There's a tendon there. And then there's flexor hallucis brevis, which which means short. So it's a shorter tendon, right? And so here's a fun, crazy test that we can do to determine whether or not your flexor hallucis brevis, okay, or that arch support muscle is actively as is actively working in any of your running, walking, standing. Okay. I'm so excited. So Kate, do you have like even like a pencil or a phone? I need something like stiff and rigid that you can stick under your toe. I have a pen. Okay, let's try that. Uh, uh, this too. would be better. This would be like I have this cool um mouse what is this called? <laughs> Trackpad? Something that, something that looks like this would be really helpful for those of you at home, but we're going to get the same idea. Yeah. A phone actually, like a skinny phone would be super helpful. Okay. I got okay. If you feel comfortable putting your toe on your phone. <laughs> so what you're going to do, no, the phone is better. So what you're going to do is this is your foot. Okay. You're going to give yourself, we're going to do, we're going to do toe push-ups. Are you ready? So you're going to give your big toe a ramp. And then you're going to push down and allow allow your toe to win as you push down. So you're going to have to actively like maneuver this and give your and hold it. Yeah, it's a little while easier if like I'm doing it. I can just throw a book in here. (laughs) Thanks, Morgan. Yes, perfect. Okay. So this is this is just going under your big toe. The rest of your little piggies are going to stay home. All right, Kate. Okay, good. So get so let so line it up so that it looks like a true on ramp for your toe. 
Like your toe is a Mack truck and it's going right into the station. Okay, yes, perfect. So what you're going to do is push down on that book and allow it to be like a leg press for your toe. And you're going to go up and down, up and down. Yeah, the phone is easier because you can like, yeah. yes. Okay, so here's what, we're, here's what I'm looking for. First question. Do you feel this more in your toe or in the arch of your foot? Toe. All right. We should feel this more in the arch of the foot. Oh, try, no. try, and keep, try and keep your toe flat the whole time. Don't let it curl. Don't let it curl. Oh my gosh, curl at all. What, do so I, what not, are my other toes doing? Don't worry about those other toes. They're just out of the way. They're staying home. Those little piggies went wee, wee, wee. And this, this big toe, this piggy is doing push-ups, all right? So you want to imagine that you're pushing with the middle part of that toe, not the tippy toe, the middle part of that big toe. Do you feel it in your arch yet? Yeah, now I can if I really focus on it. So here's a really cool thing. Oh, my gosh. So the clawing, the like pushing down like this with your big toe – that's your flexor hallucis longus. So if your now. tendency to do a toe push-up is with to curl your toe and you don't actually use the brevis, that's a sign that you need to continue to improve the strength in your arch. And this is exactly how to do it. So if you can, you want to try and keep it as flat as possible because this is the brevis, the shorter muscle that lives inside of your foot, right on the inner part of your arch. It's a muscle that supports your arch. So if you're somebody who your podiatrist was like, you need orthotics, right? Yes, if you're going on like a 30-mile walk, use your orthotics, please. But in the meantime, when you're on tonal, you can actually do something about your flat feet. You can do something about your sore knees. And it starts with just identifying, oh my gosh, I had no idea. I was just not using a whole foot muscle that I have. I mean, like we already didn't, like I thought I already mastered push-ups and hated them enough. And now I have to do toe push-ups. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> We're about to do toe yoga. So get ready. <laughs> There's comments on here. Let's rename Tonal Talk things we can get Kate to do. <laughs> this is definitely the weirdest one we've ever okay, done. Okay, we gotta we gotta do a compilation series, a, a best hits of all of the things I've made you do over the years. <laughs> we really do. Um, okay, are we ready for toe yoga? Toe, toe yoga. yoga. All right. So if you bring me down, I don't know if you can you can bring your can you yes, great. Okay, so stand on your Stand up and let's see your feet, Kate. This is going to win. This is going to win, you guys. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> so, Kate, you are going to leave your little piggies home and just lift up your big toes, please. This is so hard. <laughs> get them. Get them up. Get them up. Come I'm, on. No. Nope. My toes are special. This is how you go. <laughs> and then switch. What's. Do the other ones? Yeah, so big toe down, little babies come up. Is it okay if I like roll my feet in? No, no, you know that. No, I was just trying to cheat. Okay, <laughs> okay so if you're doing this at home, this is a great way to test and then improve your toe coordination. So your ability of your brain to connect to your toes. So see if you can go back and forth and back and forth. This is what something you can do. Mean, sorry, what does it mean if it's way easier to lift the, the other toes than the big toe and it's really hard to lift the big toes? Um, so that's going to be that's going to be just a, a coordination issue with that toe extension. So your ability to talk to your big toe. Got it. Oh my God, Morgan is loving this. <laughs> so this is, this is toe yoga. And then if you can sit on the ground, Kate, and put your feet toward the screen. I feel like this is going to end up on YouTube and there's going to be some weird comments. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But we're here for it. As long as someone learns about better foot posture, I'm cool with whatever happens. All right, so go ahead and spread your toes. Okay, you should be able to do this. Now, put your, put your heels together. And put your, your, this part, your bunions together. Can you kiss your toes together? Your two big toes. 
Yes. Do you feel that on the inner arch of your Ooh. foot? Yes. Oh my gosh. I need everyone to do this <laughs> and tag me in it. <laughs> tag Liz, me and Liz in this so we know you're with us. Okay. So you, so this is, <laughs> this is called the adductor hallucis. This is a muscle that runs along the inside of your foot. And so it, so this is a muscle none of us ever use because we put our feet in little shoe, little foot coffins all day, little shoes, and they're just smushed over and they look like little bunions. Okay. And so we got to let our feet breathe. And one way to get our, our big toes to be out wide, stacked in front of, on top of the big toe mound rather than in a bunion position is to activate that, that adductor hallucis muscle, which is just the kissing of the toes. Can you tell how hard I'm working on this? My face it's is a like whole thing, Kate. I'm I so proud of you. Harder than Bulgarian split squats, but now I'm kind of getting it. And it's like, I've made the connection, the mind muscle connection and just realize there's something gross on my foot. <laughs> and so there, this is, this is toe yoga y'all. And this is a really great way to improve the proprioception, the brain body connection of your feet so that when you go to stabilize your foot in a single leg, single arm RDL or a warrior three and you're wobbling all over the place, that big toe has about 80 to 85% of your stability, your stabilizing power. And if that stabilizing power as you press into the ground, as we saw with the toe ramps, okay, these toe ramps, toe push-ups. If all of that's coming from your ankle, right, and not actually coming from your foot, it's just like up behind the, I can't even, sh how do I do this? Yeah, you put your feet on the camera. No, it's just up behind the ankle, right, and not actually in your foot. You're losing out on so much ability to balance. So if you're falling all over the place, test yourself with these. And then what I love, you know me, everything we use as our test can also be used as the medicine. So continue to do this. You can do this every day until your little toesies are able to just do the Macarena. Yeah. I'm trying to like now, like just move my pinky toe or just my ring finger toe. So those are going to be harder because they actually share tendons and tendon sheaths. So that's okay. That's okay for them to not all move independently. Okay. Um, okay. So the last thing I'm going to have you do is balance on one foot. I can do that. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see how you do. <laughs> Everyone's loving this, by the way. <laughs> do it for the people. You know, it's important stuff. All right. So bring that knee into your chest. And what I'm looking for when I'm watching someone balance on one foot is how much can they grip into the ground without curling their toes? So if you're, if I say grip the ground and you immediately curl the toes, we go back to the, oh, I'm using my calves instead of actually using the muscles of my feet. So you can go back, train short foot position, train your toe pushups, do your toe yoga, get out of your small, cute little shoes and into like a something with a wider toe box. That's also cute. You can do that. You can do that these days, it turns out. Go ahead and switch sides. Another one of my favorite hacks is if you take a sock. Okay, this looks really good, Kate. You've got excellent balance. Congratulations. If you take a sock and you weave it in between your toes like a snake, like a, you know, zigzag, and you can make instant toe spacers. This is going to be uh, number two. Like you just got your toenails painted. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, every, next time you get a pedicure, just snag the little toe spacers. I actually tell people, uh, I, I get them to like really work their feet in my class, like my ankle mobility class. And I tell them, I want you to go when you're at your pedicure next time, for those of you who get pedicures. And you're like, look, I don't even need the toe spacers. They're going to go, oh, you, you must have taken Coach Liz's class. <laughs> Um, so what you can do, you just lay it on the couch in, in your office, sitting down. Okay. Have your sock woven in between all of your toes. So just give them some space. This allows the neurological connection of this position to reset as baseline. So instead of this being your normal foot, you can ah, teach it that this is the normal position. Yeah. It's cute. It's cute. Look, Kate, we're going to wash this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So now that that, so that is the assessment, that is the medicine, take those mobility practices 
and run with them. The feet are the foundation of the body. So let's give them some love. If you would like to continue to supplement this tonal talk with some things that are on tonal, I recommend checking out ankle clinic, posture checkup, and knee relief, all of which I address what's going on at the foot. Knee relief. Yeah. So a lot of what's going on at our knees is either driven from what's an imbalance or um, or a dysfunction at the hips or at the ankles and feet. So check out those clinics and um, let me know what you think. Drop a note in the comments. Drop a note to me on Instagram or whatever. I am. I love hearing when these clinics really speak to you and really make a difference in your life. The goal of what these clinics are is to help you improve your strength without running you flat. So I like to think of these as if you were a car, I'm pumping up your tires and I'm adjusting your alignment so that you can drive far and fast. So there, it is not done in vain, my friends. It is not just for people who are injured. I use these techniques with my high performance athletes, with my professional athletes in order to pump them up and make, make sure that they are running clean as a whistle. All right. Wow. Okay. I think we all learned a lot. Um, I'm going to grab my phone so I can see comments, but um, let's answer questions. We had a lot of questions come in that I want to make sure we answer for folks. So are we ready for that, Dr. Liz? Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. In no particular order. Dilpreet Vinayak says, can you please comment during the session if any particular exercises are helpful to avoid pain under the ball of the foot or stress fractures from running? Mm. What was that? Movements to avoid? Um, Exercises that are helpful or movements to avoid. So you're going to want to work with, if you're in rehabilitation, you're going to work with whatever your clinician has told you. Um, As a generic piece of advice, I would recommend removing the load, regressing your exercises, especially the weight-bearing exercises, until you can do them pain-free. So if standing on one leg is, is so painful on the balls of your feet, Take those single leg RDLs and turn it into a two stance. It's a normal RDL with two feet on the floor. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. Dilpreet, I hope that helps. Um, Alexis Ann says, I'd love to hear Dr. Liz's thought on barefoot shoes, like zero, vivo, barefoot, soft start, et cetera, for everyday life. Thank you. Yeah. So if your foot doesn't, so remember when I said the shoes have given you the rocker, Okay. If you don't have the toe mobility or the foot strength that we just went over, I would say work on that before transitioning to barefoot shoes. Um, mm-hmm. The people who do really well in barefoot shoes, they're they, they are able to, they have the strong feet. They have these prerequisites before moving on. I'm a huge fan of barefoot shoes, but only if you're ready for it. So a slow transition, you can, maybe I'll do a barefoot shoe training program and it'll just be toe yoga <laughs> yes like in the warm-ups and cool downs oh my gosh yes. <laughs> so basically you're saying don't go out and buy barefoot shoes or go start running barefoot if you've been using normal big shoes for a long time because you're that's like going from never using tonal to like 200 pound deadlifts like you're not ready yeah yeah, yeah a slow transition you don't want to go from zero to 60 in anything that you do Awesome. Okay. That's super helpful. Uh, David Smale says, looking forward to this, having both knees replaced, then rupturing my left Achilles in Switzerland in 2019, requiring three surgeries and because the surgeon left foreign matter in the wound ooh, to get badly infected. And now I'm five months out from PTTD foot reconstruction. I need all the guidance I can get for foot health. Workout barefoot, not a chance. So just, I mean, general recommendations, I would say. Like all of this is going to help David a lot, right? Everything that we just talked about. Wear your shoes. So wear your shoes. So I have a friend who uh, had a sesamoid fracture and I saw there was a comment. uh, Someone also is recovering from a sesamoid fracture. There are certain conditions where it's really impossible to be barefoot when you work out. I train barefoot because my feet can do all of these things. Um, That wasn't always the case. So If you feel like you need support during your workouts, wear your shoes, right? Only go as fast as your slowest part. 
So there is no one size fits all definitively. Yes, everyone should train barefoot. It's like, that's a general, a great general recommendation if your feet can support it. And if not, shoes are okay, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Susan Hallman Taylor says, I'm struggling with continue to work out and plantar fasciitis, which is exacerbating knee issues. Any tips? I have a compression brace and have done her ankle clinic, which has helped. I've struggled with plantar fasciitis. It is so painful. What are like your top tips? Um, pour some water out of a water bottle, freeze it, like a plastic water bottle, freeze it, and then roll on it in the morning. I know that first step you take in the morning is the worst, my plantar fascia people. Um, so that's one way to just decrease the inflammation there. If it feels good, do it. Um, another thing is just work on the intrinsic foot muscle. So the reason that your plantar fascia might be inflamed right now is because it's working too hard. It's a static structure that's trying to do all of the work. So work on that short foot position, work on the intrinsic foot muscles, Um, give it some rest, allow it to relax while you do this. So anything that's a itis, it's inflamed. So we want to create the optimal environment for healing in that foot. Um, Try to avoid running until it feels, until it the inflammation goes down and then slowly ramp up. You don't ever want to shock the system with too much too soon, again, on anything that you do. Right. Okay. So if someone has plantar fasciitis, should they maybe make custom seated workouts or are, you know, workouts on tonal where you're standing okay? Or does it just depend? It depends on how severe the plantar fasciitis is. Usually by the middle of the day, right? It's like, oh, it doesn't hurt so bad, but it's, it's, as you're sitting and relaxing into this position and the inflammation starts to come when you're sleeping. And then the first step you take in the, in the morning is like, yeah, and it hurts really bad. Uh, if you are having pain in your foot and you're not sure what it is and the pain is like at right in front of the heel bone of your foot on the bottom of your foot, it's likely that it's plantar fasciitis. So oh, like the beginnings case. of plantar fasciitis. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, Sophia Hoho says, hi, coach Liz. I fractured my fifth metatarsal six months ago. My foot still feels stiff occasionally. What classes or mobility exercises can you recommend? Will all of these be helpful? Um, usually people fracture their fifth metatarsal by spraining their ankle, by rolling their foot and then it cracks. It's called a Jones fracture. So you have a Is this fifth tent- metatarsal, your pinky, your pinky, your pinky guy, the long bone here. Oh, Um, and the problem there is that part of the bone actually has limited blood supply. So you just got to be really careful. I trust that you're getting it checked out. Um, if it's still feeling stiff, be patient with it, be patient with it. A broken bone is no joke. (laughs) Your, your body has to, it was like, what just happened? And is, is trying to protect the ankle, the ankle and the flexors of the foot. So Gently do some toe yoga. Balancing exercises are really good after, I'm assuming it's a Jones fracture. Um, And just continue with your rehabilitation program with your physical therapist. Otherwise, ankle mobility clinic is great. And anything that doesn't cause you pain that's above like an eight or a nine um, is going to be great for you. So continue to strengthen. The way that if I was working with you, I would say, all right, you come and see me and your foot's blown up like a balloon after it wasn't. I'm going to say whatever you did yesterday, too much. <laughs> and if if you come to see me and your ankle feels fine and it's just a little bit stiff, I would say, all right, let's continue until you're good and you don't get even any inflammation. And then we start to increase from there. <clears throat> so those are the parameters that I'm looking for when I'm working with someone with an injury. Awesome. Okay. Scott McDonald says, and I think we kind of covered this, um, I'm flat footed. Would, would that make more of an argument for shoes or against? And it's slow transition or working on Yeah. Um, first, I just want to address the language mm. around like, I am flat-footed. <laughs> Team flat-footed. <laughs> Not true. Okay. Like you are currently dealing with flat feet, but you are that is not your identity. That is able to be, that is a factor that is able to be changed through the exercises that we did today. So if, if the... If you're unable to get into short foot position and maintain that throughout your workout, give yourself some support, some nice supportive shoes with a really wide toe box. Um, And 
wide toe box. I can't recommend brands or anything, mostly because your feet are going to be more narrow or more wide. What's wide for you is different for other people. So just go try on shoes and make sure that you can do this thing whoop, inside of your shoes. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> gradually try. So my, what I would say is if you can hold short foot position, go barefoot. If you can't, give yourself a little crutch until you can work up to holding short foot position for your whole workout. Scott says toe yoga. Here I come. There you go, Scott. That's right. That's right. Um, okay. We've got to the pre-submitted questions, but if anyone has questions that we didn't address, please just copy and paste them back in this chat or type them and put them in the chat. I'm, I can try to go through and find them, but I might miss them and I don't want to miss any questions. We have nine minutes. So if you have questions, now is your chance. And I'm going to look for, actually, I remember Morgan wrote a question. She said she's struggled with shin splints her whole mm. life she played d1 tennis and the, her shins literally like split apart like it was so bad mm. does that have anything to do with her feet or her shoes or is it totally separate yeah so when i was when i was the athletic trainer for a high school <clears throat> cross country team every athlete got shin splints um a lot of that was because it was really cool to have the the zero drop shoes at the time <clears throat> and nobody did any strength training. Nobody did any foot mobility drills in the summer. They weren't before. Doing their toe yoga. They weren't doing their toe yoga in the summer before cross country season started. So my biggest recommendation for them is to decrease the mileage. We, I mean, in, in season, I'd tape them up and send them on their way and um, do rehab after, but we don't need to do that. We don't have any races to win, most of us. So decrease your mileage um, and take a look at your foot mechanics. A lot of times it's tight gastrocs that lead to shin splints. Um, you have to like lift up and do so much like lifting up of your toes instead of pushing off of your toes. So working on the strength of the big strength of the big toe <laughs> is going to be a huge factor in alleviating shin splints and then working on ankle mobility, gastroc and soleus mobility to free up the anterior shin. Okay, and shin splints, that. shin splints for those of you who are wondering, are just, it's a, it's a pulling away of the fascia on the bone. Um, and it can actually lead to stress fractures along that, that anterior shin bone, the front of your shin that you like bang on the coffee table. Right. Okay. And the, the one with the towel underneath the first quadrant and, and doing that, that would be a good one. Okay. That's a really good one. And pair that with the thing that we did in the ankle clinic where you go into that deep stretch and then while you're in the, okay, while you're in the deep stretch, you try so hard to lift your toe up off the floor. So yeah. it becomes strength in the deep range of motion. It's not just swinging you, stretching you passively. You actually build strength in that deep range of motion. That's what's really going to make a change. Perfect. Okay. Um, Kenny Lucier. Hi, Kenny. Says, will any of this help with arthritis? It will help in preventing further degradation, slowing further degradation of existing arthritis. Um, <clears throat> arthritic changes are are really tough to reverse. Um, you can decrease the inflammation that will decrease your symptoms. A lot of that's going to be around proper posture and mechanics, nutrition, volume of whatever you're doing. So decreasing those factors can really help the pain and inflammation that goes along with arthritis. So should we do our next one on arthritis? Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Look at the look. Yes. We're running out of body parts. So <laughs> We're going to just go into conditions. This is great. <laughs> um, okay. Dan asks, any suggestions for avoiding black toenails or losing toenails when doing long runs? I've never run that far. Yeah. So um, off. Instead of painting them black, paint them purple instead. <laughs> uh, so that's that's often a jamming into the front of your shoe. So it, you can do a lot. Look up like an ankle lock or a forefoot lock in your shoes. The, there's a way that you can tie your shoes that's not like this, <laughs> where you can like really secure your ankle into your sh shoe so that it doesn't slide forward. Oh, interesting. Cool. Okay. And then Arun Takur says, how do you train? I'm sorry if I said your last name wrong, Arun. How do you train strengthen your feet for mid foot strike in running? Uh, practice mid foot strike and do these exercises that we went over today. Can you explain that? Yeah. So, um, 
there are two ways to strike when you're running. You have a heel strike where it looks like this. You hit the ground and then you push off. Okay. Mm -hmm. You hit the ground and then you push off. There's a certain school of biomechanics that, and barefoot runners that say that when you hit the ground like this, you're actually breaking. So you're losing momentum when you heel strike. So there are some advocates for a, let me try and do this, for a <laughs> midfoot strike where you kind of keep, you kind of go like this. Uh, <laughs> All right. like you just reversed when you're on this camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, ooh. Um, and so you're kind of like pulling the ground away with the midfoot. Okay. So the midfoot. Which one do you recommend? Which um, It yeah. really depends on a lot of things, most of which your foot strength. So a heel strike happens with shoes. <laughs> so if you're, look at how, look at this heel on this shoe. If I'm trying to mid foot strike, my heel is actually going to get in the way. So that's why heel striking happens in shoes is because you actually have a lift in your heel on most shoes to account for the human foot wasn't designed for pavement. All right. It was designed for soft, mushy, sand and dirt and grass, all right, and fields and running after wolves. And so we probably, I don't know, I wasn't around back then, but we likely developed a midfoot strike. Um, <clears throat> the heel strike was, some people argue, I don't want to make a stance, but some people argue that the heel strike is because of shoes. So yeah. And, and it can help you like in in running down hills, right? There is there are times, even if you're in a barefoot shoe where a heel strike is appropriate, it's going to help you break. It's gonna help you give give yourself a little bit more um a opportunity to not step on a rock, okay? Trail running or whatever. Got it. Um, not to put her on blast, but Morgan kind of runs on her toes. What does that mean? Is that good? That's the probably a midfoot strike, actually. Like very much on her toes, though. That's cute, Morgan. <laughs> That's cute. Um, okay. <laughs> Nikki E.K. I, Nikki, help me say your last name, please. Because um, I see you in the community and I never know how to say it. Um, I have bad soleus pain when running. Could this be due to foot issues and not just calf issues? Bad what pain? Um, soleus pain. When but running. Could it be feet and not just tight calves. It could be a lot of things. It could also be the sciatic nerve. So. Oh, okay. That's a whole so other. It, it, could, it could be a lot of things. Um, take ankle mobility clinic and take my back relief and see, see what you see, what you find. I can't. Thank you, Nikki. Okay, cool. I hope that helps. Um, sorry, that's not a definitive answer, but it sounds like that's like, we need to explore more there. Explore more. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I think we have one more question from Patrick who says, oh, no, I can't find it. Um, are there any specific foot movement that help improve back support? Short foot position. Yeah. Short foot position. And this is so cool. So there's a lot of people who, when they stand, they'll shift more of their weight naturally onto the balls of their feet. And or there's other people who, when they stand, they shift more weight into the heels. If you think about it, if you sh like, if everyone stands up right now and shifts their weight forward, the backside of your body has to anchor and and like squeeze in order for you to not fall on your face. And the opposite is true for those who tend to ground into their heels when they're standing. So when you're standing, you want to have your whole footprint equal pressure on the ground, left versus right, front versus back. Um, so just investigate there. I think I talk about that imposter checkup as well. So you can go through that and it's like 10 minutes long. Endure it. It's a clinic. It's meant to educate you. Spend some time with me and you can check up your body, check up your posture. It sounds like we should all just go do all of your clinics. Just do all of my clinics. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's where we're leading towards. Everything, everything that I share in those clinics it's because I have people who have come to me to be like, hey, my elbow hurts when I do this on tonal, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, this is why you're actually not engaging your shoulder effectively. You know, my knee hurts whenever I'm doing goblet squats. Great. It's because of your hip. So anything you can think of, I bet you the remedy is in one of those clinics. So smart. It's like the, the secret sauce to successful training on tonal. Truly.
Thank you so much, Dr. Liz. This is so helpful as always. Um, I learned a lot. Um, Everyone got to see my feet and we had a great time. (laughs) Sounds like a great great Wednesday. I know, right? Um, (laughs) Next Wednesday, we have another doctor coming on, Michelle Seeger, to talk about No Sweat. It's her book. She is a leading researcher in motivation, especially for fitness at the University of Michigan. Super smart. Um, very excited to chat with her and to talk about um, her book and some tips she has for the tonal community. So be sure to tune into that. That'll be November 3rd at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And grab your, grab your copy of No Sweat and um, join book club. And we will see you then. Thanks so much, Liz. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Go do some live classes. Go do a Coach Liz clinic. And um, we'll talk to you next week. And do us proud. Put the toe in tonal. <laughs> Signing out.